Hi there, and welcome to another web snippet brought to you by the guys here at Innova Systems. My name is Matthew, and this time I'm going to be talking about adaptive mesh refinement in SolidWorks simulation. Okay, so what I've got here is just a simple metal casting of something that might have two tubes or pipe running through it. So having a look at our study, you'll see we've got a fixture on the inside of this face here, a bearing load on the inside of the other cylindrical face, moving towards the screen in the Z direction, and also a force going vertically down on the inside of that face again, so moving in the negative Y direction. So I've just set up a basic mesh to begin with, and I'm just going to run that quickly. And we can take a look at our results. So the first thing you'll see is we've got about 9.3 megapascals reading out on the stress plot, but it does look somewhat blotchy in the middle here. So we would now be taking steps to refine that mesh to make sure that we are reaching results convergence. So what I'm going to do is apply a mesh control in the regions where we're seeing that high stress. I'm just going to drag that slide all the way to fine for the time being. OK and run again. OK, if I just turn my symbols off and come and have a look, we'll see that we've got a much more even spread of that peak stress, but it does still look rather blotchy. So what we would have to do is start looking at refining that mesh again, run it again, have a look at the results, see how much this peak stress, which is reading at 10.2 megapascals at the moment, has changed, and then go again. And that's an iterative process, which can be quite time consuming. And for an inexperienced user, it can be quite difficult to know exactly where you need to be refining your mesh. So let's have a look at one of the adaptive tools that can be quite handy for us. So first of all, what I've got here is exactly the same study setup, but in this case, I have already run the results, and we've got a pretty similar stress result to what we started with in the previous study. Now what I'm going to do is by right clicking on the study type up here and coming into the properties, I'm going to activate the adaptive tab. And here I'm going to select an H adaptive method. And what this allows us to do is specify some controls which are going to drive how SolidWorks is going to refine our mesh and reach an accurate result. So the first option we've got here is the target accuracy. So this is the accuracy level for our strain energy norm which essentially is a way of telling SOLIDWORKS how accurate that strain energy norm needs to be. So in this case, at 98% accuracy, we're saying that that error value in the strain energy norm needs to be within 2%. So the error isn't fluctuating by any more than 2%. We then have the accuracy bias, which is a way of controlling how SOLIDWORKS is concentrating on refining this mesh. So, for example, if we were to drag this slider all the way to local, we are telling SOLIDWORKS to concentrate on accurate peak stress results. And that will use less elements, but it will be trying to hone in on those really, really peak stress regions, which can sometimes be problematic. But obviously, as you can see uh, highlighted to us, it is faster. If we were to drag the slider up to the other end, our global accuracy bias is a way of telling SOLIDWORKS to determine overall accurate results. So it is slightly slower, but it has a much better way of coping with things like singularities. The next option we can select here is the maximum number of loops. So what SOLIDWORKS is going to be doing is running the study once, analyzing its own results, and refining the mesh in accordance with the stress gradients that it's just determined. Then it'll go again, and that is one loop. And so here we can specify how many loops SOLIDWORKS is allowed to take in order to either reach convergence or simply stop as a result of the maximum number of loops. And finally, here we've got mesh coarsening, which is a way of telling SOLIDWORKS that if it finds an area that has very, very minimal stress gradients, so the stress isn't changing or isn't really significant in that area, we can tell SOLIDWORKS that it can make that mesh coarser, which is going to reduce the solve time slightly. OK, so if I just hit OK there, and click run. What we'll see is the solver window comes up and it says solving loop one of four. So the next time that window pops up, it will say solving loop two, etc. And what you'll see is as the loops are completed, the stress results on the screen will update and we'll see that stress gradient in the center there getting gradually smoother and smoother. 
So now what we've got on the screen is a warning from SolidWorks Simulation saying that the analysis has satisfied our desired level of accuracy. So we are within that 98%. What we could do is if we hadn't achieved our 98% accuracy, so our specified level of accuracy within those four loops that were five loops that we had specified, if we hit run again, what SolidWorks will do is take the current mesh setup and continue to iterate from there. So we can keep clicking run until we reach that convergence criteria. So here now what you'll see is we've got a much smoother stress gradient in the middle here. And if I just show the mesh for you, you'll see that what SolidWorks has done is refined the mesh to quite a fine level in this peak stress region in order to achieve an accurate stress gradient in that area. And that is the crux of the H type mesh refinement. So what it's doing is analyzing those stress results, determining those gradient, high gradient areas, and making the mesh size smaller in those areas in order to resolve that stress gradient accurately. So let's have a look at our other type now, and that's the P type. So what I'm going to do here is, again, have a look at our whole body stress, and you'll see we're starting once again with quite a blotchy stress result. So the same stress result that we started our H type with, and it's exactly the same setup as before. But this time, when I come into properties, I'm going to activate the P adaptive mesh type. So the options we've got here are, first of all, telling SolidWorks when to stop. So we've got three options in here. So we can base it on the root mean square of the resultant displacement, the root mean square of the von Mises stress, or the total strain energy. So that is our criteria, and what we're saying is stop when the change, for instance, in the root mean square of the von Mises stress is 1% or less. So it's like saying 99% accurate. We also tell SolidWorks in the next box uh, which elements to update. So what we're doing when we're solving is SolidWorks is determining an approximate error for the stress value in each of the elements. And if that error value is greater than 2% in this case, we're telling SolidWorks that that element there needs to be refined further. Now the P-type adaptive mesh has a slightly different way of refining that mesh. Whereas what we saw with the H-type was that the mesh structure was changing. So we were making elements smaller and smaller in order to resolve our geometry better. In this case, what we're doing is changing the order of our solve. So if we can picture um, a polynomial equation representing the shape function, what the P adaptive mesh is going to do is step up from the second order elements that we use by default, which means that the displacements of each of the nodes within the mesh are calculated based on second order equations. The P adaptive mesh type is going to take the elements that fall within our refinement criteria and increase the order of those elements. So say uh, we can make them third order, fourth order, or fifth order, fifth order being the maximum. And that's going to much more accurately represent the curvature within mesh elements. We also, again, have the option to specify the maximum number of loops here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is leave that setting on the maximum von Mises stress and select OK, and hit Run again. And so what you'll see we've got here is a very similar result to what we ended up with with our H-type mesh. And that's, in this case, based on the original initial mesh. So our actual mesh structure hasn't changed in this case. All we've done is update the order of the elements in those peak stress regions. Okay, one thing that um, I will also bring to your attention, if I switch back to our H-type uh, study, is the opportunity to, by right-clicking on the results folder, define an adaptive convergence graph. And so here we can plot, for instance, the maximum von Mises stress. And by hitting OK, we can just have a look at how those results have converged over that iterative process. So here we can see how we jumped up first. And then the stress dropped down a bit as we refined our mesh. And it's beginning to converge as the change is getting smaller and smaller. OK, that's about all I've got time for. So please join us again soon. And as always, if you want to get in touch with us, you can call in at the website, which is www.innova-systems.co.uk. You can drop us an email at support at innova-systems.co.uk, 
or you can give us a call on the number you see on your screen now.